MJF comes out for a promo. He's beloved. He wants to admit that he suffers from both attention deficit disorder and rejection sensitive disorder. And he explains what life is like with this. He cannot regulate rejection-based emotion or disorders. And I, I'm pointing at the screen like Leonardo DiCaprio. Like, hey, that sounds all very familiar. Uh, he says, I've been bullied, abused, cheated on, lied to, beaten up. One particularly galling example of this, a group of kids threw fistfuls of quarters at him, told him to pick them up Jew boy. And he did not like this. He learned the world was evil. He had a stab at everyone else before they stabbed him. But that's no way to live. I ended up becoming a scumbag myself. And he said, being hated is easy. Being vulnerable is hard. If I opened up and you booed me, I'd be destroyed. But I'm not scared anymore. Now, great, I'm, still a scum, I'm still a scumbag, he notes. But I'm ready to be your scumbag. And the fans are chanting, he's our scumbag. And by the end of the show, there already is a scumbag shirt in Burberry pattern available at shopaew.com. One person, he says, taught me that even Max Friedman, the devil, deserves a friend. It's Adam Cole. Adam comes out. Adam says, when we started teaming, I was scared. I didn't know what kind of friend you were prepared to be. But people love you, Max, because deep down inside, there's a good guy in there. MJF says, I know I promised you a title shot. I don't want it to be just a title shot. You deserve more than that. You deserve the main event match and the biggest show we're ever doing. MJF versus Adam Cole at Wembley in All In. And I thought, hallelujah, they've announced a match. A match is going to happen on that show. MJF passes Cole a contract. He tries to get this fan. He tries to get the fans to chant, sign it, sign it. They instead chant, read it, read it. That was awesome. Uh, Cole ignored them and signed. He gives Max the biggest, biggest hug he ever saw. And the very end, he very deliberately spins Max around so Max is back to the camera. And Cole's hug goes from an open hand pat on the back to that closed fist stabbing gesture. And some have noted the last time Cole did this, it was to Roderick Strong at NXT, and it didn't go well from there. This was, like most MGF promos, very good, but man, it was very long. I could talk for hours about this. So, uh, number one, I think they should have won the tag titles on Collision. And the fans clearly wanted them to win the tag team titles on Collision. And when they didn't, what we said was, well, then they need to have something that is better. And I argued that I don't think that Adam Cole versus MJF in a singles match is going to have more interest than them as a tag team going after and ultimately winning the tag team titles as a team. So they came out and they did this segment. And I thought both guys did a, a great job in the segment. But when it was over, my main takeaway was, you know, the fans were into it. You know, they were in MGF as a baby face. They, they cheered and everything like that. But anyone that's going to sit here and tell me that this got anything resembling the reactions over the last several weeks for them as a tag team, you are lying to yourselves. If you'd like to lie to yourselves, that is fine. It's yourselves. But that's, that's the fact here. Now... I think anybody, anybody who is listening to this right now, who is a subscriber to this website, I think that we can all see where we think that this is going. And that is that the fans, you know, they're, they're clearly not trusting necessarily either of these men. But I think that the most obvious thing is that MGF is going babyface. He needs to be the MJF that he was during the tag team deal, which is he's still a total dick, but he's the fans dick. And, uh, you know, Dave last night said, you know, I don't think the fans want to see vulnerable MJF. And, uh, and he's right, but I think that it was extraordinarily necessary for him to be vulnerable in this segment because, like you, Vinny, I believe that Adam Cole is going to stab him in the back. Adam Cole is the one who is going to turn heel on MJF. And that it is going to happen at Wembley, most likely. And that is why they could not do the tag team title run. Because they're, uh, they're splitting. 
and they are doing this giant angle at the biggest show that they have ever done. So that is what I presume is going on here. And, you know, if that's what happens and it gets over great, that's all fine. You know, to me, uh, you can still have them win the tag team titles and then do this a little further down the road. But my guess is they don't want to do it further down the road. They want to get this thing going, do the deal at Wembley, and we're on our way. So we'll see how it goes, man. We'll see how it goes. But I think they had a big opportunity Saturday they didn't pull the trigger on, and I think that they should have. But you know what? They my company. There is more. Because you go backstage where there's Roderick Strong. Quick aside, uh, Roderick Strong noted on social media this weekend that he had turned 40. And he took a photo showing that he is in ridiculously great shape for a 40-year-old man. He's tan, he's jacked, he's ripped, his butt buff. He looks awesome. And uh, he's, he was still wearing the neck brace in the photo. No shirt, but neck brace. That made me laugh. Now, of course, he has a neck brace, neck brace here. He's furious. He's throwing a legit tantrum. He's tossing furniture. He's flipping tables. In steps the kingdom. Mike Bennett and Matt Taven. They point out Adam Cole has a long history of forgetting about his real friends. And they leave it there. They leave Roddy to stew on that. And they walk away. The plot thickens. And come on. This, this is not like a spoiler or anything like that because I don't know what they're going to do. But brother, at Wembley Stadium, Roderick Strong, Britt Baker... They need to be out there at ringside for Adam Cole's big moment. And those two need to slide him that big fucking roll of quarters mm. to knock out MJF, win the title, and there is your three-person unit. You elevate Britt to the wow. very, very main event since people have been asking for, you yeah. know, book the women better or whatever. Roddy is there. You've got uh, Adam Cole. It's a perfect three-person unit. It's your old-school DX. And apparently, well, apparently... Plays off the most horrible thing that ever happened to MJF in his life with the quarters. Yeah. I mean, come on. This writes itself! But, of course, so did Saturday, and they didn't do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And apparently, Taven had been there to be the tag team. So, there you go. The Elite versus Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal and Satnam Singh. It is 2023, technically late 2023. It's August. I am watching both Chris Jericho and Jeff Jarrett whipping ass on national TV. This is an amazing business. Bro, let me tell you what is an amazing business. What is amazing is the fact that uh, Wednesday, on the 200th episode of Dynamite, it was announced that the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega and Hangman Page had all turned down the idea of going to WWE in favor of going to AEW. And that very night that they chose AEW over WWE, they did spots with a seven-foot giant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is wacky. That is wacky. Uh, speaking of the giant, uh, one thing about the Bucks that really, really makes them unique, is there anyone ever who is like the top heel and the top face at the same time, but it works? Because they're baby face tag team and the crowd loves them. <clears throat> but they tag in this big guy. They demand the giant tag in. And then Matt realizes the mistake he has made and just how big Satnam Singh is face to face. He goes to tag out and Omega and Nick walk out on him and leave him high and dry. Like, as baby faces, none of this stuff should work. But they're so funny, the crowd loves them anyway and still cheers for them when they make their comeback later in the match. So they do make their comeback later in the match. And uh, they work together to chop down the tree. They super kick. Uh, Sanjay over and over again uh, Sanjay Satnam until, over and over again until he's uh, down on his knees and then dropping with the V trigger Kenny actually tries a one winged angel on the big man and got him off the ground and w w was uh, I mean Satnam had the ropes but a large portion of his weight was suspended on Kenny's shoulders for a bit there Sanjay makes a save to put a stop to that Brandon Cutler sprays uh, Karen at Jarrett in the eyes Sanjay drops Cutler. The Hardy Boys, who were out there for some reason, kill Sanjay. Jared has a guitar, but he gets buckshotted by Hangman. And finally, the V Trigger and One Winged Angel finish and pin Jay Lethal. We just saw Jeff Jarrett do this circus match on the uh, TNA show earlier this week. And this is what Jeff Jarrett does with the Jeff Jarrett match, but sometimes it works. Usually when he loses, when he loses at the end, it works. And uh, his team lost here, so it worked. This is also fun. I was amazed. And what I saw in this match, I saw Kenny Omega 
and Satnam Singh doing spots, trying a one-winged angel. I saw Kenny Omega working with Jeff Jarrett in 2023. I saw the Young Bucks throwing high drop kicks to the gut of Satnam Singh. I fucking saw it all, and the place went crazy. I mean, they got they got them into this match, which I, I, I didn't doubt going in, but it was still amazing to see this match and see how insane the fans got for it. It was great. So Omega and uh, the crew that announced that uh, they all re-signed, they're going to be here for the 200 episodes, to be here on Dynamite, Ring of Honor, Rampage, maybe even Collision. And the crowd goes crazy for that. And he does his goodbye and goodnight deal. All right, oh. Granny, let's get moving here. <laughs> or not. Uh, not all at once. Ah, wait a minute. Am I supposed to do my... Yeah. I can't find it. Just a minute. Oh, shoot. What's going over there, Granny? <laughs> I'm, I'm getting it. Okay. Did we catch you off guard with our Tuesday night show? Why don't you read another question while we're waiting? Well, I closed the Facebook. Let's see if I can uh, dig it back up here. I'm ready. Sean, okay, I can't believe mind. the faith you have in Vinny to this day. <laughs> All right. Well, never it's, mind. It's absolutely incredible. <laughs> Go ahead, Granny. <laughs> it's been how many uh, years? <laughs> what is happening on this show? <laughs> Granny, I want to know. It's Are your you turn, Granny. We're waiting for you. Then don't interrupt. Who interrupted? That was just... eight seconds of dead air. <laughs> hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.